Hey everybody, Thesha here with Legacy of Light in conjunction with One Love Wellness Center here in Menasha, Wisconsin, coming to you for one of my 365 days from my heart to yours. And right now, um, we're in the middle of If the Buddha Dated, a handbook for finding love on the spiritual path, but also just, uh, you know, conscious relationships. How do we create them? How do we sustain them? And although this is for, you know, dating so to speak I you know you can use this with any of your relationships I believe and even if you are in a relationship already there's definitely tools and things to help you with where you are at so this week is practice loving kindness to yourself and others the guest is inside you and also inside me. You know the sprout is hidden inside the seed. We are all struggling. None of us has gone far. Let your arrogance go and look around inside. And that's Kabir. Kindness reflects a warm, open heart. When we start a new relationship, our ability to be kind is often tested. Suddenly, our potential mate is rude to our best friend. She's late and doesn't apologize. He says he'll help us out and then breaks his promise. We are jolted, disappointed. It's easy to rack by being judgmental and self-righteous. That insensitive clod, that self-centered brat, we say to ourselves. We might feel hurt and wounded and want to say, I can't believe you do something so mean. When we become critical, it's time to back off for a moment and reflect so we don't have two people separated from their hearts. Kindness was embodied in the words of Jesus of Nazareth, that he who is without sin cast the first stone. Instead of instantly pointing a finger at others, we can look inside. We'll find that everyone is inside us because the whole range of human emotion lives in us. When we distance ourselves from someone else, we create distance within ourselves. This does not mean we should tolerate abusive behavior. It means we learn about ourselves by observing our behavior in the relationships. So again, as always, there is a point. You know, obviously, if there is something abusive, you don't stay there. A lot of us choose to for, you know, whatever reasons. But this is not advocating that you just stay in this space to learn some lessons. There's a difference between friction and abuse. And if you're questioning whether it is abuse, then I would just consider it abuse and move out of that. What is going to bring you the most peace in that situation? Let's put it that way. If it is not staying in the relationship, then don't stay in, in the relationship. It is up to you. And like I've said before, you can't make the wrong decision. But what is going to be the best decision for you? And even if it's, you know, not necessarily abusive and you still don't want to stay there, then don't. It's your choice. That's the beauty of this whole thing of free will is that we get to choose everything. It's not just some things sometimes. It's everything all the time. So... Other people are constantly holding up a mirror for us to see ourselves. If someone comes to us with their grief and instead of attuning to them, we start crying. We've bumped into our own unresolved grief. If we are constantly afraid of someone being angry with us, we need to look at our own buried anger. The more we have acceptance and compassion for aspects of ourselves, the more we can relax when others act the same way. When someone is upset, for example, we can remain 
a compassionate witness instead of feeling compelled to calm them down, shut them up, fix, analyze, judge them, or push them away. Kindness doesn't suggest we have to like every person, personality or want to spend time with them. We get to choose the people we enjoy, but you don't have to throw anyone out of your heart either. You don't have to fix their heart, take it away, or give them a patronizing pat on the back. You can simply observe them experiencing their feelings as part of their journey and decide if or how you'd like to connect with them. Another aspect of loving kindness is to remember that it's not being free of imperfections that's crucial to relationships. I'll repeat that again. <laughs> It is not being free of imperfection that is crucial, crucial to these relationships. It's being honest about our faults, about our mistakes. When we accept our humanness, we become able to apologize, not grovel, just apologize for having been rude, insensitive, dishonest. Our apology to another is a form of compassion to ourselves because it signifies acceptance. This is at the heart of intimacy. If we are struggling with various fears and foibles, instead of hiding them, we can reveal them, hopefully with compassion and amusement. By revealing ourselves, we find out if our new friend can join us on our journey. And that's the whole thing. Are they gonna join you on our, your journey? Is it something that they want to do? Because when we present all that we are, we are giving this person a chance to make the choice for themselves. And as they are presenting all that they are to you, they are giving you a chance to make the choice if, if this is going to be where your path is going. Meditation on kindness. You could imagine this or remember to do it when you are in a crowd. When you are in a crowd, look around at all the different people. Notice their clothes, their faces, their hair, their sizes. Look at their gestures and movements. Notice if they are loose, stiff, or free. Just take it in without judgment as if you were looking at a garden of people. Then see them all as energy fields, the same as you, just energy. As you continue watching, think to yourself, every person here has had to live every day of their lives, just like me. They have had to get up every day, decide what to wear, face loss, success, hurt, shame, just like me. Everyone fell down while learning to walk. Everybody probably felt anxious the first time they kissed, just like me. Each person has a story to tell. Some of the chapters are heroic. Some of them are about loss, some about fear, some about achievement or joy, just like my story. Then continue to think of them as energy, conceived as an egg and a sperm just like you. When you say goodbye to someone or decide not to see them again, remember you are a moment in their story. Make it a story that doesn't leave a scar. So as I was saying before, if you get to a point in a relationship that you just don't want to be there anymore and you've made that choice it's okay it doesn't have to end in you know turmoil and anger and strife you can end it without leaving such a big scar on that person and end it with compassion and just say look we're going different directions or whatever you want to say, just say it with love 
and with compassion for that other person because we're all living our lives. We're all living these dreams. We are all creating them. We are all going through the same motions, the same things. It's just our stories are different. But we're all going through stories. We're all going through dreams, living our existence here. So why not do our best to look at everyone else with compassion and do whatever we can to be the most compassionate that we can? You know, and especially when we are doing that saying goodbye or we're realizing that this, you know, maybe this relationship isn't serving you and that's fine. Or it's just not what you imagined it to be. And, and you don't foresee it within your, you know, your perception, your view to be going in a direction you want to. That's okay. Then end it with compassion and end it sooner than later. Don't, you know, string that person along to cause a bigger scar. Yes, ending friendships or any time of relationships is, you know, can be painful. It can be hurtful. But if it's for your greater good, that pain and friction and hurt is going to, to be the best for both of you, actually. You staying with somebody when you don't want to be is hurtful. That's more hurtful to them than the short amount of pain or hurt that you are going to, you know, have affected or, you know, has had an effect on them is going to be shorter than this, you know, than, you know, if you stay with them a year longer, or six months longer, or however much longer. If you know in your heart that this isn't for you, compassion, compassion, because you are that moment in their story. It's their story, but you are part of it, just like they are a moment in your story. And so it's kind of like looking through everything through the eyes of love, because we are all love. Whether we're perceiving it right now or not, whether we're aware of it right now or not, it is. And as I said before, like the truth doesn't need you to believe it for it to be truth. So we can just live with this loving kindness to ourselves and to others and just living from that heart space, living from the, the eyes of love and this connection that we have. And you know, as Kabir said, the guest inside of you is also the guest inside of me. And that is us, that is our spirit, that is our divine essence that we are here to share. And that's what these relationships are helping us with. But if we start here first, it always translates out to there. So what our, our truth is in here translates to our truth out there, what we believe in our hearts, in our heart of hearts, will come to fruition out here. So when we're compassionate, and practice this compassion and loving kindness to ourselves, we can then practice it with everybody else and learn to be compassionate in every situation and allow things to just flow and be as they are. And as always, remember that you are eternally adored and loved for, for just being you. And as 
in you know the comment sections there are other ways to get a hold of me if you know that is something that you're looking to do maybe you have a question maybe you're interested in the other things that I do I do music healing stuff um, yeah so all sorts of things and that's why I'm here sharing this because this is part of it this is part of my passion and my compassion for this this universe because I want you all to know and to realize that that you are magnificent and that you are one perfectly beautiful masterpiece.